irreverent, offensive, even lewd. On the other hand, insightful, thought-provoking, and intriguing. In this episode of Erudite Magic, we are covering Harrison Greenbaum's You Are All Terrible, or as you might think by looking at the cover, Terabell Volume 9, an obvious spoof on Tarbell Number 9. If you've been around for a while, then you probably know the name Harrison Greenbaum. He's a stand-up comedian who also performs magic. Harrison has performed on TV with shows like America's Got Talent, Last Comic Standing. He even did an episode of Penn & Teller Fool Us, which has never been aired. In addition, he did a run in the New York, New York Casino in Vegas as the star of Cirque du Soleil's Mad Apple. And he's perhaps most infamous for his magic roasts, the State of the Magic Union addresses that he's given at conventions. Basically, he's dedicated his life to comedy and he loves magic so much that he's afraid to let us continue to be terrible. Now, what do I mean when I say terrible? Harrison is a guy who wears his emotions on his sleeves. He sees magicians stealing other people's lines, performing the same trick that everyone else performs, and there's basically no art to it. Or at least that's his contention. So during the pandemic a few years ago, he put pen to paper or got on his keyboard and typed and came up with You Are All Terrible, a guidebook on how to make your magic better, primarily through learning from the comedy world. So right off the bat, most of his expertise has to do with being funny. And he's sharing that expertise with us here in this book. And the question really is, is it worth it? We're going to address that question in just a minute, but let me give you some of the specifics about the book. It is a hardcover book with a dust jacket, as you can see, that it's designed to look like a Tarbell book. But if you look closely, isn't that at all? In fact, when you read the spine, it actually says the Tarabell course in magic. A misspelling of both Tarbell and Terrible. This book was put out by Tannen's Magic out of New York City and apparently is the first book that they've put out in over 37 years. If you remove the dust jacket, and we'll come back to that in just a second, you can see that the book actually does resemble a Tarbell book, only it seems that this is paper bound instead of whatever the other books are, more of a plastic type binding. For whatever reason, Harrison Greenbaum has some kind of beef with Chris Angel. If you don't like Chris Angel for whatever reason, then you'll enjoy a lot of the humor that he weaves throughout the narrative. Back to some of the details about the book. It is a little over 200 pages, but that's a little misleading, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. There are no magic tricks taught in this book. He doesn't even hint at any methods. However, there are line drawings throughout done by the talented Scott Baird over at the Hermit Magazine, ostensibly just so that if one of your friends is flipping through this book, they will see some of these really strange drawings and wonder what in the world the trick is that's being taught there. However, they're just for fun. Now, why do I tell you all this background about Harrison and the book, uh, the fact that it's designed like a Tar Bell book? It's because it gives you an understanding of what this book is. It is instruction on how to create your act, to tailor your show, to make it more artistic and funnier. But it's more than that. It's also an attempt to be a humorous book itself. One of the obvious things is if you've ever seen Harrison Greenbaum, you know that he loves to make jokes and he holds no punches. So I'm going to warn you that this book is rated R. That's right. While you get a lot of great instruction about how to make your show better to be funnier, it's also filled with a fair amount of profanity, lewd jokes, and other things that Harrison thinks will make you laugh. Basically what I'm saying is, is if you're easily offended, don't even think about picking this one up. Or if you're thinking about getting this for a younger magician, probably not a good idea. Not yet. All right, so let's talk about the contents. What are you getting when you get this book and is it worth your money? I wanna say up front, I read it cover to cover and I bought this with my own money. So if you think that I'm giving it a review because I got it for free, that's not the case. This episode of Erudite Magic is being sponsored by Don's Magic and Books. Don does have Tara Bell number nine in stock and ready to ship to you. So if this is the type of book that appeals to you or you're interested in improving your magic through comedy or comedy techniques, then be sure to shop with Don at his website, donsmagicandbooks.com. I'll drop some links down in the description below so that you can quickly and easily find his website and get shopping right away. 
Not only does Don carry You Are All Terrible, he also has older, out-of-print books, some rare gems that are waiting to find a home in your library. He offers fast and free shipping if you meet minimum thresholds within the United States, and all of his books are great deals. He's a wonderful book dealer and a personal friend, so I don't know what you're waiting for. Head over to Don's Magic and Books, tell him I sent you, and start shopping this week. At the beginning of the book, Harrison starts off with a discussion about art. Is magic art? What is art? And although he challenges you to come up with your own definition, he then provides you with his and backs it up with some well-reasoned arguments. This is where the first point that I want to make comes into play, and that is you're really only interested in reading a book like this if you want to create art. If all you're interested in is learning tricks, I've already mentioned this book doesn't contain any, and if you don't agree that magicians should be coming up with their own artistic vision for their magic, then you fundamentally disagree with what Harrison is trying to say. So you'll save yourself some money and frustration by just ignoring this book. But if you're like many magicians who want to find your own voice, that want to find a way to communicate the ideas that you have, the life that you've lived, and the things that we talk about here on this channel, then I think you'll get some benefit out of this discussion about art. I didn't completely agree with everything he said, but I've wrestled with my own definitions of what art is and does magic fit into it, but this book definitely made me think about what art is and how I can create it. I think that it is a great background into then the meat of this book which is understanding comedy. He gives you several theories about comedy, why it works, what makes people laugh, and it's all backed up with research as well as his own extensive experience. A lot of magicians use stock lines. So you hear a joke or a little funny bit of business and you decide to pilfer it and add it to your own act. In the immortal words of Bob Newhart, Stop it! Harrison's gonna show you how you can be funnier and then how that will apply to your magic. So once he lays the foundation about art and how that applies to comedy, he shows you how to be funny, how to apply comedy to your magic act and make your act better, more original, have a point of view, something to say, with a practical outline and things to back up his point of view. He talks about the three C's of comedy, contrast, compression, and clarity, how you can apply those and how he has with some very clear examples. He'll walk you through joke techniques, callbacks, getting your setup done faster, and then how this ties in with magic. Now, while that's what he teaches you, and he does so in a funny way, we'll be laughing as you read it, or, or at least I was, it stops short of being a workbook. So while he does give you an overview of what these things are, they're very much a survey level class. It's a lot of great information and it will help you become a better and funnier performer, but it'll be up to you to decide exactly how to apply what he's teaching. This middle section, the meat of the book about comedy, is about a hundred pages. And at the end of the book, he also gives you a few bonuses. Some articles that he wrote for various magic periodicals, an article in Genie about dealing with hecklers, which actually has some really great advice how to deal with that problem if it exists for you. But the other two contributions are more just to be funny or to be sarcastic, which if you know Harrison's style, that's him. So let's talk about the page count for a second. I said that this is 200 pages, but there's a fair bit of filler here. As you can imagine, being a book that's intended to make you laugh, there's blank space, there are jokes, there are drawings that are made up completely just to throw you off and make you laugh. And I don't think that takes anything away from this, but this isn't a huge book. You can basically read this in a couple of sittings. So let's talk for a second about the price and the value in the book. It is $55, which in today's world seems like a fairly reasonable price or at least normal. But do you get your money's worth? I think the short answer is yes. You'll definitely have to put in some homework to apply the lessons that Harrison is teaching you, but that's exactly the way that he wants it. As I was reading it, he mentioned how he hones a joke and I was thinking to myself, he's giving me the process but there aren't any of the details that fill it out about what he does after each show. I would have loved to have seen more about that. However, he redeemed himself a little bit after that by explaining better the process that he goes through each show, and he'll share with you how you can get better each show by doing what comedians do, which is essentially performing, getting feedback, and then revising, applying that feedback. He'll give you practical tips on how to do those things, as well as you get a sense for how much work he puts into it. For example, he thinks that performing five to six times a week is minimum to be able to polish your show. 
At the end of the day, I definitely picked up some tips, some things that I know that I want to do and implement to make my magic better, if not funnier. And that really was the interesting value to me, is that most of the techniques that he's teaching could be applied just to magic. It doesn't matter whether you want to be funny or not. The same techniques that work to improve comedy and the way comedy works, the rules of three, cutting down on dead time within the joke, increasing your, let's just call it laughs per minute, but it could be your awe per minute. There are different techniques that you definitely will find useful. And of course, there's the humor that goes along with it. I mentioned already he likes to poke at Chris Angel. So if that's your style of humor, you'll enjoy this. There is a fair bit of sexual and scatological humor as well. So as previously mentioned, if you are offended by that type of humor, then this isn't going to work for you. However, I think that Harrison is merely punctuating what he tells you at the very beginning about making art. That is, you need to do something that you're so passionate about, that is so you, that you're almost embarrassed for even your family to see it. It comes from a place of raw passion within you, and that's what I think you get here is when you read this book, you are interacting with Harrison Greenbaum. I definitely feel like I got my money's worth out of this book, and when I'm ready to work specifically on my jokes, I know where to go to look up the structure and other things that I should be implementing. If you like books that are trying to help you improve your magic or get to a point where you can perform more comfortably in front of other people, then be sure to check out this review, which is a practical workbook on how to become a walk-around magician. As always, my friends, I appreciate you watching. And until next time, keep reading.